Okay, hi, here I go down the rabbit hole of Geekdom for the second time and create a video on my uh, JXD S7800B, which is a, uh, an Android tablet gaming device. So I did a little unboxing uh, just to see uh, what it looked like when it came out of the box. Uh, I've now had a couple of weeks of playing with this uh, and can just go through a few other bits and bobs and uh, things that might be interesting to people who either have one or are buy thinking of buying one. Um, first thing as you can see is I've bought a case for it. Um, it's particularly susceptible, and I'll go through that in a second, when traveling to, um, to damage and banging around. So um, this case is actually a, um, a CD case. It's a, one of these 40 aluminium CD cases you can buy on eBay. It costs me about uh, 10 quid or something, free postage. So it's quite a nice case. It actually fits almost exactly. It's, it's banging around a little bit inside, and I'll explain what I'm going to do about, about that in a moment. Um, but it's a nice case, very tough. Um, even without any anything inside, it would protect the device. Um, but I'm going to do something else with it. Uh, if you pop it open, you can see the device inside. And you have the JXD. Um, fits almost exactly, actually, and it's probably good for traveling because it means it's not much extra bulk to the device. Um, and what I'm going to do is I've, I've bought some aeroplane foam, um, which I'll, I'll put into here. Uh, I'll cut the shape out for the, for the JXD and pop it in. It's a little bit close to the edges, but I think it should be okay. Um, and obviously there's a um, there's enough room in the case top, so I probably won't have to put anything in the case top that protects this. And this is really the reason why you'd need to protect the case, and it's these these joysticks here. Um, because as you, as you travel around, they're, they're, I mean, they haven't broke for me so far, but they're, they're not amazing. Um, you could finally... Uh, knock those off one day. So this case is a, a great little protector for that. So that's that. And so we have the JXD itself, as you can see. Um, so I mean, I did a quick view of the of the outside of the device the last time. Uh, I'll just quickly recap on that. It's actually got a screen protector on. Um, it's not a screen protector when you get it. It's basically something it travels with to protect the screen. So it's not a very uh, uh, you know, one you'd buy off eBay or a fiver to stick on the front, but it's it it does the job. It's you know you can see a few scratches on it. It's protecting the screen as it as it should do. Um, it has a little tab on this corner you just pull off, and and I've just left it on. You could pull it off, and I'm sure it's uh, nicer, but it's just something that further protects it. Um, as I said, when when I got it, the um, the printing's not amazing. You see there uh, on the buttons, uh, but over a couple of weeks of use and using the buttons quite quite often. Uh, no particular issues. It's just not printed very well. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit haphazard, but it's, it's working fine. You can see the speakers there as well. Um, but they've been working fine. It hasn't rubbed off. Uh, the case is still in good condition. Some people complain about it rocking when it when it drops. I mean, if you, if you sit and do that with it, yes, of course it, it rocks, but don't sit and do that with it. It just sits perfectly fine, to be frank. Um, and again, no issues on the back. Uh, I'm, I was right, you can't take the battery out, so the battery's fixed in. Um, and again, we've got the SD slot here. Uh, we now know this is a, a mini HDMI port, uh, the charging port, headphone port, and your, uh, your micro USB, which is effectively for, for gaming controllers, really. Um, that's it, on-off button. So um, I've got a 16 gig card in, which I've got in the bottom there. And again, I'll mention that in a second, because that uh, was a bit of fun and games when I first got the device. So there you go. So I'll switch it on. There you go, works fine. Uh, you can see it on. And, um, you know, effectively, um, it comes with a fairly stock version of Android on it. Um, I'm not a huge Android fan, and to be frank, I'm still not a huge Android fan, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, but it does the job and it works fine. So you open it up there. Um, I don't have anything else on it because for me, I bought this as a gaming device. So I've got an iPad, I've got iPhones. Uh, and if I want to use those devices, then that's what I'll use for, for uh, my regular things. So this is purely as a gaming device. Um, so I've changed the screens a little bit, put some own backdrops on, changed the swipe motion, uh, etc., etc. Um, and, and basically, I've just got my gaming devices on uh, here and just some, some uh, various apps I've downloaded. A couple of apps which are um, fairly crucial when you get the device. Um, first of all, get rid of the browser that comes on it. It's rubbish. I download Chrome, which I've got here. Uh, and also the, the file browser is also rubbish, so I've downloaded this one, which is the, the ES file browser. 
um, which works a, a heck of a lot better than the one that came with it. Uh, and as you'll find out with these devices, you're going to end up moving a lot of files backwards and forwards. Uh, and that's really the first comment about the device. It's not for beginners. Um, yes, there is a piece of software on that you could use as a beginner, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but generally, if you want the best out of the device, the best out of your emulators, the best out of the games you're going to play, you're going to need to download individual emulators. You're going to need to move the ROMs around yourself. You're going to need to set up the directories. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, honestly, this is not the device for you. And that's really goes to the same with most Androids, which is why I dumped them all into iPhone quite some time ago. But this is a pretty good browser. It allows you to quite easily um, move files backwards and forwards between the different cards. Uh, and the first thing I'll show you on the screen there is the what you actually get on the device. And um, it's interesting to note that it's touted as a 16 gig internal memory with a one gig uh, DDR RAM, uh, which is true. It, it has the one gig and that's your internal memory. Um, but it, effectively, um, that's all you get, you get the one gig. Uh, and the 16 gig is not really internal memory. It's actually a surface mounted SD card um, inside the device. So you get one gig of true DDR RAM and you get a 16 gig internally mounted SD card. Now that caused me a lot of confusion when I first got it because I couldn't understand why I had the two SD cards. I've got the SD card here, I've got the external SD card here, and I've got the device, which is essentially the, the one gig of RAM that's fitted with it. Now that one gig of RAM does cause some issues and the issues are mainly around it's only one gig of RAM. So if you're downloading a, downloading a game which is um, you know, quite large and certainly it's larger than a gig, um, you can't you can't do it really. There's not enough room, um, and some games will only allow you to download to that memory. They won't allow you to to switch into the other memories into the SD card, um, and that it hasn't caused a problem for me because I'm not using it for that. I'm using it for ROMs, and so that's not an issue. But it is something to bear in mind. Uh, and then you get the SD card here, which is your 16 gig, uh, just there, and then you get the external HD, which is here. Now again, that can prove confusing. But you've got an SD card, an external HD card. So just to make it really idiot proof for me, if I go to the SD card, I've actually created a blank folder called this is the internal memory. Um, because as you're bouncing backwards and forwards between folders, it can get quite complicated as to which folder you're actually in. And so I did that. And then on the external SD card, I've written this is the external SD card. And again, it, it sounds a bit obvious, but it can get confusing as you're bouncing backwards and forwards. Now, when I first booted the device up, and got confused on the SD cards, popped my SD card in, it was an old one out of the phone, I thought, okay, that's great, uh, I need to um, to wipe that, uh, and I accidentally wiped the internal 16 gig drive, which had everything installed on it that came from uh, JXD. Uh, all the emulators, all the raw, uh, well, there's a few ROMs, all the emulators, uh, the Happy Chick Game Center, which I'll show you in a second, uh, gone, everything gone, and I was like, great, okay. So after a few fiddling around, I managed to find the JXD website. You can download it all separately. And I've got it all working again, but it took a good couple of hours. So keep that in mind when you get the device. There is an internally mounted SD card and your external SD card. So it's not really a 16 gig internal memory per se. It's just, a, just an SD card that's mounted on the circuit board. So, um, so that's the file browser, which is great. Now I was looking around for some devices to try and mount the memory so it was internal memory to try and make it work better and there's this GL2SD uh, I can't get it to work honestly uh, it, it seems to need the device to be rooted I don't think my device is rooted yet uh, I haven't got into the intricacies of ROMs and moving uh, ROMs around the, for the device and, I, and again I'll speak about that in a moment so again I, I haven't really needed that much I've managed to get away with it as it is um, so it's not a big problem one day I might need to do more around that area. So um, yeah, so for, you know, get rid of the browser, get rid of the file explorer, download these two. They're free. That's not a problem. Uh, you've obviously got the Play Store. The other thing, because it's an Android, uh, I've got the Task Killer on. So if you're closing it down, that enables you to close everything that's running down and saves a battery. Uh, and I've got the the battery saver as well, which does the same. It enables you just to check that uh, the you know there's nothing running in the background that's going to chew your battery up because Androids are particularly susceptible about that. Um, if you down swipe here, you can see the, the battery's charged, it's fully charged here. Um, when you first get it, it's it's absolutely dead, as you saw uh, if you did watch my original video. Um, when you first get it, it's absolutely dead, there's there's, uh, there's no nothing in it. So you need to leave it to charge for a good few hours, um, which is fine. Um, and then it actually takes a few charges before the battery gets to its maximum capacity. Uh, initially, it's just not working at maximum capacity, it takes a little while. 
uh, I think it took me about three or four charges uh, and, and the first few charges it wasn't lasting very long maybe two three hours um, but now it lasts a lot longer than that. I haven't actually sat and done it to the death but um, it certainly lasted a, a trip to Egypt last week uh, and, and a bit beyond that um, again with the device you get the, uh, the charger with it uh, as I said on the first video there's a few complaints with this charger people go oh it gets hot and it blows up and it explodes I have no issues with it it actually works perfectly fine it seems a fairly good quality charger uh, now I did buy one of these uh, which is a USB charger for the with the same plug end uh, it doesn't actually work um, so it tells it says it's charging um, and uh, it's either very very slow I'm actually charging it from a, um, a proper um, charger end so it should be quite fast it's my iPod charger end um, but it doesn't work so I, I, I'd actually order two of these one from China one from the UK this is the UK one uh, I'll see when the China ones come if it works any better um, but again, the, the main charge is fine, so it's not a big deal. So that's that. Uh, that's the device. Um, what else can I say about the device itself? I mean, like I said, if some people complain about the size, I like the size. Um, it could have worked just as well as a five inch screen, to be frank, it's a seven inch screen. I think um, you'll get as much out of it as if it's a five as a seven. I've looked at the fives and the sevens of these devices online, the seven's better spec, so, um, so that's, you know, it, it's a better machine. And again, the size is nice, and some of the games look really nice in that size. And especially, I think, if you're looking at some of the Dreamcast games and the games that are normally played on a larger TV, um, they would work better on this device. The smaller games, the games you generally have played on a, um, a small handheld device, would work, would work better on the 5-inch, I think. Um, the other thing, which I don't think is a great idea, is these joysticks, as you can see here. Now, I've got a couple of issues with these joysticks. I mean, generally, day-to-day -day gaming, they, they're working fine, okay? Um, they, they work, they do what this says in a tin, um, they're a joystick and they, 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 you know, they do joystick type activities. Um, but my problem with them is twofold. One is they're a little, they, they protrude quite a lot and they don't need to be that big to be frank. I mean to get, you know, if I take it to maximum distance here, you've still got a, a, you know, a few mil, three or four mil that it could have gone. So that could have been shorter. Um, so it, it, and it so it doesn't need to be that long. It, it doesn't need to stick out so far. It didn't need to be that that long. Um, I mean, additionally, it would have probably worked better if it had been more of a PSP type um, joystick. So you know, fairly flush with the device, and so you you move it in more of a PSP way. I think that would work just as fine, and it would have made the the form factor a bit more flush fitting against that. So, um, but I mean, these are these aren't major issues. I mean, if you're prepared to get around them. Uh, they're not a big deal um, you know I do feel when using them you've got to use a little bit too much travel on them um, it's not it's not a deal breaker but it is quite a bit of travel and I just would have preferred it to be a bit less travel maybe a bit smaller uh, that would have been fine um, so that's good and uh, you know works fine generally as you're using it so if we get to the the actual emulators themselves so there's three down the bottom here, I just haven't bothered with it because I'm not interested in There's the, the WSC emulator, which I can't remember what it is, but it's some sort of really old handheld, uh, you know, that came out at the same time as the Game Boy, like a Famicom or something like that, I can't remember what it's called, but it's some sort of emulator. I'm sure the games are fairly pants, so I haven't bothered. Um, there's a PSP emulator. I've got a PSP. Um, I don't really want to play PSP games on this yet. Uh, and uh, you know I think the issues you're going to get with a PSP emulator is speed you know how fast is it going to be on here um, I do have seen some videos that basically say it, it can get slow you've got to fiddle the settings and I've got I've got a PSP so why bother um, so I haven't done that and again I think you're going to start chugging up your um, your, your, um, your SD card fairly quickly if you start pulling in um, PSP games so, and the other emulator there is a PS1 emulator, which I think is probably the same. I mean, I've got a PS4, um, and I've got a PS3, and I've got the, one of the original 60 gig PS3s that also plays PS1 and PS2 games. I've had the 60 gig PS3 for, gosh, seven, eight years, quite some time. And I got it when it came out, and um, I've actually never played a PS1 game on it. I think I've probably played PS1 game... Um, Oh, I don't know, it was some sort of driving game and, and um, you know, Gran Turismo actually, I played Gran Turismo and uh, on an emulator, so I played Gran Turismo on a on my PSP because my PSP is hacked 
Um, and it's fine, it's a good game, but again, it's you know, I haven't used it on my PS3, I played it once on my PSP, so I'm just I'm just not really bothered to do that. So the PS1 I mean I'm not bothered with, PSP I've not, and this 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 other one here, Super Famicom, whatever it's called. Just haven't bothered with that. So if we look at all the other emulators we've got here, we've got the Gen Plus Droid emulator, which is your um, uh, your Sega Genesis system. We've got a Mega Drive emulator. We've got a SNES emulator, uh, which is by far one of the best ones on here, the SNES emulator, uh, as is the uh, the NDS emulator. And actually the NDS games and the NDS emulator uh, is the one I've spent the most time with by far. Uh, there's Recast, which is a Dreamcast. It works. Um, it's a little bit hit and miss, but uh, I've managed to get that one working. You've got a Nintendo 64 emulator, which is uh, which is actually quite a good one, uh, so that works fine. I've got a Neo Geo emulator, uh, which is a free version, and that works fine as well. Uh, there's a MAME emulator, which again is working good. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Uh, I've got a Amiga emulator on there. Um, I'm an old Amiga guy from back in the day, 500, 600, and a 1200, which I eventually dumped in order to get a... Uh, a PC once I watched Doom uh, and that was me sold it was PCs all the way from there uh, Amiga P uh, Doom type emulation was just terrible so that's an Amiga emulator but there's some great games on there um, and I've got a couple loaded I haven't managed to get the hard drive working I'll have to fiddle a bit more and this gets back to the the fiddling of this machine and I'll, again I'll explain that in a second uh, there's a Commodore 64 emulator brilliant uh, Played Iridium on there, which I can show you in a second, and, and really it's one of the best games I've played for a long time, and uh, it's still an amazing game. Still remember playing it in my bedroom, uh, and it's brilliant, it's just a great game. We've got a NES emulator, which is fine, and then we've got the Happy Chick thing. So Happy Chick is interesting because it's it's clearly illegal. It comes on the device, it's a Chinese app written by a Chinese team, uh, translated into English by the same team, and it basically is a is a one for all type device, uh, type app. Um, in that, uh, on the Happy Chick emulator, if I open it up, um, it will emulate more or less anything for you. And, um, you know, you can go into the categories uh, with all of the different platforms on there, and you can em you can run inside this app all of these emulators natively inside it, but you can also download all the games. So, uh, as I said, clearly, um, it's clearly illegal, um, but it, it generally works okay. Some of them work very well. Uh, some of them don't work so well, which is why you need to have the individual apps. So, which is why I said earlier about, um, you know, this is not a device for, for beginners or newbies, because um, if you use Happy Chick, okay, you can get away with it, with a little bit of understanding of the Happy Chick uh, device, and you know, running the emulator in here, and downloading the games in here, works fine. I mean, once you've downloaded a game, you, it's just sit, sitting there in your play area. So you can see I've got, um, you know, I've got a Dreamcast game, Rayman 2, I've got some... Famicom games, I've got, uh, you know, an Android game there, an R-Type. Um, so, you know, I've downloaded the games. Um, really just have a look at them and have a look at the thing. Um, personally, I prefer playing with the actual individual ROMs. The N64 one, for instance, was absolutely rubbish. It was, uh, there was glitching all over it, it wasn't working properly. Uh, and then I thought, well, it's just best to, to do it yourself. Um, and then that's the other thing around the emulators themselves. And, and as I said, with the File Explorer, you're going to spend a lot of time bouncing files backwards and forwards between folders to try and uh, to try and get things working. Essentially, um, some of these emulators will work from the SD card, the internal 16 gig. Some of them will work from the external HD, uh, and the ones that work from the external will obviously work from both. But some won't work from both. Some will only work from the internal 16 gig one. That's the only one I'll recognise, um, which can be a bit of a pain because obviously that's your 16 that you want to sort of save. And I've got the 16 external I want to try and stick as much on um, and so again you have to it's a bit trial and error which ones will and won't work I mean you know for the main emulator again it gets very confusing as to the folders so I had to put into the main folder this is the main emulator um, so you know which one to stick your ROMs in uh, and so you know essentially I found it better to um, to do the individual emulators and play around with those and get them working and have the ROMs set up um, so, you know, just a very quick look, I mean, you know, again, you can see the, um, the Sega one, the Sega Genesis, um, it's free, so you've obviously got some ads at the bottom, but you don't get those when you're, when you're playing the games. Uh, you can load the ROM quite simply, uh, there are some ROMs I've got, um, you know, and then you've got, you know, Wonder Boy in Monster Land, and I load that one up, it, uh, it just works fine, you know, I'll push the start button, which is 
PF, and there you go. So, um, you know, that's the, uh, let's try and dump out there, that's me jumping around now. So I go back to the home. So that's your, your, um, your Sega Genesis. Obviously you've got your Mega Drive as well. Um, I haven't downloaded some of the, the best Mega Drive games yet, the Altered Beasts and uh, those sort of Mega Drive games. Mega Drive was sort of a bit, you know, um, I was more into PCs and Amigas when the Mega Drive came out and then uh, basically jumped straight into a Nintendo 64. So Mega Drive and, and having a Mega Drive wasn't wasn't really part of my youth and childhood. But again, you know, you can play, uh, you know, that's a Alien 3 on there and it works just perfectly fine. Uh, I have played this game, it's it's okay. Um, uh, the other thing is you can hear it there is the sound. The sound's, the sound's good. I mean, um, you know, I, I'm only running at half there. I'm running at full. It comes out the stereo speakers. Uh, works really well. Um, no issues at all with the sound. Really good. Um, if I'm traveling, then I'll just put the headset on. And again, it's very good through the headset. So that's Alien 3 running on my, uh, my Mega Drive. Um, so the best, you know, one of the best emulators on here is the, the SNES one. Um, this is one of the most popular SNES ones that's on the, the Play Store. Um, I can't remember the name of the guy, it's, in, it's on one of the emulators, but he's, he's the guy that does the uh, the main emulators and um, he does quite a few and it's obviously uh, something he does a lot of. Um, and again, you know, if I look at the SNES, I mean, I've been playing uh, Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong Country, uh, most specifically uh, Final Fantasy. Um, you know, Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past is the one I, I've actually been playing so I just open that one up you get a you know the some of these uh, with a bit hit and miss you can restart the game and you can continue where you left off, off. and there's me um, basically playing as a, as a Link as a Link or whatever you call them and, um, it works very well and I've been playing this game, I'm still on the first level, so I've been playing for an hour or so, but um, enjoying it a lot, and uh, it's a great little game, so you can see um, why these games did so well. So coming out of there, really excellent, yeah. So, and that's the SNES, so the SNES one's a really good emulator, I definitely recommend that one. Uh, and so far, my favourite one by far is the, the, uh, the DS one, the Nintendo DS. So, uh, and I've basically spent all of my time playing, um, actually this is uh, Legend of Zelda again. Um, I can't remember which one, the one where you blow on the screen and it's very, this one's very um, led by having a stylus so um, you might have to use your finger a lot or swap the screens a lot but you can see it works beautifully this is uh, the, uh, the, the emulator running the, uh, the startup screen there's the little fellow in green uh, brilliant, brilliant emulator and the, and the screen size, if you've ever played a DS and uh, my kids all had a DS the screen size is fabulous, I mean it's a really good screen and the game it works best on I just come out of there I need to stop this and uh, do a new game. You know, you can see the games I've got in here. I've got Animal Crossing, uh, Contra, Lego, Star Wars, um, uh, New Super Mario Brothers is, is specifically the one I've been playing quite a lot. Um, so I'm now I'm now on World Three for Super Mario Brothers, and uh, it's just brilliant on the screen size, and even more so because you don't have to use the touch screen so much. So um, you know, it comes up. Or rather it doesn't in this case let me just back out of here so um, reset the device I mean again these are emulators so they're not going to be perfect every single time uh, you're going to get the odd load error here and there mm, let's try it again so let's do a reset quit so that's it don't want to quit so go back into the emulator um, and do a load. We're going to go down to Super Mario Brothers. We want to choose a new game. So yes, uh, no, it's not a new game. Just fine because I'm saved. Uh, and and actually on this one, I find uh, you can you have this thing called you can do the save states. You can see Super Mario Brothers. There. It looks amazing, plays amazing. Um, you know, and again, literally, I'm on. There we go. The screen there, World Three. Um, and you can see as I play the game, it's just you know pitch perfect. The sounds perfect. The um, both the D-pad uh, and the, um, the joystick were fine on it. Uh, the buttons work beautifully. Um, it just it, it just so great, and it's a, and it's an amazing game. It's when you play it again, you realise what gameplay actually is and, and and how well these games were designed. Um, 
and again so I mean I can uh, let's do the little fella let's go um, and there you are so you know we now have Super Mario um, and you know it, it just plays really really well the sounds good the, um, the pictures good and let's just jump on this fella let's get my little big fella going whoops too slow but anyway you, you get the gist it, it works very very well um, and again, because you don't have to use the touch screen so much, then it works just fine. The other thing you can do on here is um, if I if I pause it, I can flip the screens around so I can have them side by side if I want. So it's like this smaller Mario um, and uh, this button. Um, and then I can uh, I can also have it the size I had before. But then if you ever need to use the touch screen like you do on the Zelda one, you can flip it around so that the, the, the screens are different ways. It's just, you know, it's a really good emulator. So I'm quit out of there. Really good emulator, works really well. Uh, and so, you know, basically the snares and the NVS one and the two weeks I've had this is, is where I've spent most of my time. Uh, great games, great emulators, great platforms to, to you know, with some great back catalogs. So Recast is the Dreamcast one. Um, this took a little bit of fiddling around to get working because you've got to download the Dreamcast BIOS um, from various dodgy sites uh, but once you've got it it works and um, downloaded a couple of games uh, actually no I haven't funnily enough so I had downloaded a couple of games to um, uh, but they didn't work so well so I downloaded um, uh, the Sonic one I hadn't downloaded Crazy Taxi but I downloaded a couple uh, they, they, I got them working but it just wasn't great so I actually went back on this one and, and tried them in Happy Chick and actually ha what Happy Chick does is it both downloads the um, the ROMs for you um, and the emulator on Happy Chick is the recast emulator so it, you know you can use uh, and in the case of the Happy Chick app where you're using the same emulator you can download it works just fine uh, so that's that um, Nintendo 64 this is the one where the, the, um, the Happy Chick one doesn't work so well so um, I've actually been playing Paper Mario on this one, which is uh, it's one of those Japanese games which has loads and loads of talking and intros and this, that and the other, and it just gets a bit dull sometimes. Um, but the game itself is actually pretty good, the, the way that the, uh, the 3D world is, uh, is developed. I'll just wait for that to load, it takes a second. Um, there you go, so there's Paper Mario. Oops, he's gone off screen. Uh, so the way the 3D world is working, let's get the light out of the way. Um, and the way it moves, you can see the, the graphics are wonderful, the graphics are really good. Um, I've got a whole back catalogue of 60, N64 games downloaded. I'm not going to go that because I think I have to have a fight. And obviously this is just a demo. Um, but you can see it works fine and again as I said I've got a whole back catalogue um, on Nintendo 64 games running uh, and they're working great. Um, I played this, I played Perfect Dark, which was a little bit dodgy. Um, so again, you have to play around with them. Um, some of them will depend on the settings, some of the emulators won't run with all of the games. It depends on how the emulator handles the 3D parts of the ROM, etc. etc. But the, the main ones for the Nintendo 64 work just fine. So uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Paper Mario, Mario 64. Um, obviously the ones that the emulators are developed to work best with work well on the emulator. Um, so we've got Neo Geo here, so this is the Neo Geo emulator, uh, and there's some great games on here. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, let's have a look. So we've got this one here, which uh, won't work. Load game, uh, Cute Fighters, will work. As I say, you've got to, uh, well, I think I've been fiddling around with the directories on this one. So I have had it working, it's not working at the minute uh, for the Neo Geo um, uh, Neo Geo and MAME are generally more or less the same game, so um, I have managed to get, I have had some of these working uh, in the drive, I think what's happened is, uh, yeah, and again, it's, some of the formats don't work quite properly, Neo Geo's and, and MAME emulators are the ones which are hardest to get working, because some of the formats for the, for the MAME have to be specific zip files um, for specific versions and so on and so forth, so it can be a bit more tricky, um, but I did get the MAME to work. Uh, and on the main one, where's my uh, load? So I got I downloaded this one here, which is Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, which is uh, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, next, there we go. So it, that will load up for me. Press any key, off we go. Um, and this is one of the ones where you map you map the controls to the screen. So again, I didn't mention that, but you you know any games like this. Oops, I think I've accidentally closed it. 
Um, any games like this, you map the controls to the screen, and, and there are options as well to, to hide the, the mapped buttons, but I, I don't bother. Um, but if you look at this one, you can see that I've mapped, you press this mapping button down here, it re remembers in the main, not always, but it remembers what you've mapped to it, so you can see that I've mapped my left joystick to, to the joystick pad, um, I've mapped the A and B buttons here to the, uh, the two red buttons, and you know the different options at the top of the screen I've mapped to, um, to my trigger buttons. Uh, and again, so you can see this is working great. This is the Neo Geo emulator. This is Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Um, I was actually surprised when I played this because it's, it's a lot of fun. I and mean, you essentially put your coins in. You press the coin button. I don't want to map it, don't I? I don't want to do that. I'm going to map the coin button to the left one. It's this one. Oh, actually, I've got maximum credit in there for player one. So you, you map that. You push the start button, which is that one. And off you go, play Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. So, um, you know, just just great. The graphics are great. It works perfectly well. Um, I haven't got into saving things on here. Uh, so you, you bat, bat them all around. You, know, you move around in 3D. And so it's, it's, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's actually a hell of a lot of fun. Um, you know, the, the, this game on the Mammy and Blade. I, I could download more. Uh, and so, I, you know, effectively, I just close out with this. Exit the app. Yeah, um, I, I've got these work. These work fine in the Happy Chick, so I, I just kept them in Happy Chick to work. Uh, so for the Game Boy emulator, that's fine, and I just did a couple of Game Boy games. So this is old school Game Boy Color type stuff. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Old school Game Boy Color. Sometimes the buttons work. Sometimes you have to press it. it you know, in and out of the different emulators, it can get a bit confusing. Um, and again, so here's a Game Boy Color, and again, it, you know, from what you remember the Game Boy Color screen, which is well, it's something like this size, you've now got it more or less full screen, and it works just fine. Um, no issues at all on the Game Boy Color. Um, Game Boy Advance is the same, and so I managed to get uh, Prince of Persia and Super Mario Advance. Um, so you've got a bit of a pattern here with the Mario games, I'm starting to rediscover them. And again, you know, the Game Boy Advance in full 7-inch glory. Um, you know, absolutely fabulous. This is the Japanese version, obviously, um, but I can download the, uh, the British version as well. Uh, and again, working fabulous. Uh, Amiga emulator is interesting. Um, again, you have to download. In fact, I bought from the Play Store uh, an app which is called Amiga. So what's the app called? Uh, Amiga Forever Essentials, which gives you the official kickstart ROMs for Amiga. Um, official, bought, paid for, legal. Um, and you need those to run this. Without those kickstart ROMs, uh, nothing's going to work on here. Um, and you know, you get the option to have four hard drives. You get the uh, sorry, four floppy disks, four hard drives. Uh, I actually haven't managed to get the hard drive stuff working at all yet. It's going to take a bit more fiddling to work out what file formats I'm going to need, how to put the games in there. Um, I downloaded Another World, which is one of my favourite Amiga games, uh, but I haven't managed to get it working yet. So a bit more fiddling required on that. Um, but on the floppy drive, you know, I can, I've got Batman and Cannon Fodder. Cannon Fodder doesn't work so great because, um, um, cancel that, because it, it needs a mouse. So um, Batman works really nicely. Uh, do that, okay. And then basically you start. And again, it's mapped to the screen. You can see there is a sort of a, a mapping over the top. Uh, it's a hacked game, so you get the old. This, remember games? I remember Commodore 64 games I used to buy at school. From, we used to trade them, and you know all these hackers and they're, um, you know, they're scrolling things, going backwards and forwards. But essentially, this works fine. Uh, so this is the Amiga, and again, you've got the the mapped buttons on there. Come through, and there we go. Now I remember this game specifically because when I bought my Amiga, and I think it was the Amiga 500. It might even be the 600, but I can't quite remember but I think it was a fire and this was the game that came uh, with the the pack so you but you bought the Amiga pack and it had uh, had this game in it Ooh, let me try and get it to work Resume. I think it's loading so it actually loads as if it's an old Amiga so it's a little bit slow um, and, and again this is the uh, this is the game that I bought and I remember it distinctly uh, and as soon as I started to play it I remember it even more because it was um, such an infuriating game you couldn't get up the ladders very easily um it just it just used to drive you nuts uh you can have unlimited lives on and off i'm going to switch that off don't want unlimited lives um move down don't want to move down with this 
Mm -hmm. As you can see, sometimes it's a bit of a fiddle to remember exactly what works and how it works. Mm. Yeah, that'll do. As I said, this one sort of seems to load in uh, pseudo real time. So there's, there's the Batman uh, as it used to power up on my Amiga. It's the Michael Keaton Batman for any of those that uh, remember the film. Um, it is loading in real time, pseudo real time. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say while we wait for that to load. Um, as you can see, I've had a lot of fun last few weeks playing with this. Um, a lot of fun. Been uh, great discovering some of these old games and discovering some old games for the first time. So there we go. Batman finally loaded. And as I said, it's pseudo real time. And I remember this. It just used to be infuriating with the, the little fellas. Um, so hold on, what are these buttons? Isn't that one. That one. There you go. They, they chuck in there. Um, here he is. He throws his bombs. And the things you infuriate me most about this was that the you have to get it almost pitch perfect to be able to walk up the ladder. Um, get out of the way here and and it's exactly the same I remember as soon as I got into the game I was like oh my god this is exactly as it used to be when I was um, you know 16 years old uh, with my Amiga 500 taking this out of the box at Christmas and trying to climb these ladders and it used to drive you nuts I haven't actually managed to get off this first level yet and I remember the second level is a, uh, is, a is a driving game where you drive around in the Batmobile and grab hold of uh, have lamp posts so great fun great fun game and as i said i've not managed to get the um the hard drive working yet so that's something i'm working on another favorite is the commodore 64 i mean at school i was a commodore guy so it was commodore guys and spectrum guys and the commodore was the one i had the commodore 64 uh, and so again you um you go into here you load the disc and i've got some of my favorite um games here you've got Batman the movie which is actually the Commodore 64 version of the game we just played the Amiga I would I would hesitate I would hesitate to say that the 64 version is better it's more playable it's just easier to work even Bruce Lee was I remember this gosh you know running around the little Bruce Lee was amazing at the time one of the first games so it's quite rudimentary paradroid you know impossible mission stay a while stay forever but by far the game here is is uh is Iridium so start the disc uh, click the back button to get rid of the, um, the keypad and you enter joystick mode and again it, you, you map the joystick. So new, no music in the intro, don't care. What do I press to get this going again? Oh, hold on, yes, you've got to get into the key, uh, keypad, that's right. Press return or press any button. That's it. And press back again and that uh, that moves it in so here comes iridium um, you, know, you probably can save this but I haven't bothered um, but you know iridium you know one button games this is this is just it was one of my favorite games ever and I've spent several hours on the plane last week playing this again uh, in this screen size um, oops, hold on. it's uh, not working with that to working with this uh, obviously need to map it again so as I said earlier some you need to map some don't map this is obviously one one of the ones that doesn't map and um, you need to remap it every time you do it um, and you just it's trial by error to work out which one does and doesn't work and this is one of them uh, and I think you know this game I can't remember exactly how many ships you have to to battle through on Iridium to get to the end to get to Iridium which is the final ship um, and this is lead, I believe. Um, remember these? You've got to flip backwards and forwards. So um, it's just a it's just a great game. I've really enjoyed playing Iridium again, listening to the to the sound that it makes. Uh, and then we got a NES. So you know, good old NES. It's actually really big. And there's Super Mario World again. Mapped buttons works perfectly fine. Um, mapped on there. Um, and in this case, probably haven't mapped. Yes, yeah, so you can see that they they it hasn't saved between playing this game and it's not mapped. So, um, you, but you can see it's work, work working fine. And actually, you can see even coming up to this size screen, um, com, you know, compared to the uh, the TVs of old, even and, and the resolution they showed, you can you can see the the pixels and how it's put together for the NES. Um, but you know, for me, 
yeah, and I've got Joel Dragon on there as well, which is which is good fun. Um, but for me, you know, I think uh, I've really enjoyed the Commodore 64. The Amiga one's been frustrating. The main ones are okay, but as I said, they're difficult to get working. Uh, but the NDS one's sublime, uh, as is the SNES one. Uh, they're two of the best emulators. And again, as I said, you've got the Happy Chick. And if you wanted to go in there, so, you know, for Happy Chick, if I go to play, um, you know, I've downloaded uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghouls and Ghosts even. Uh, and you can play that and you so you play it in there you get this click to buy ad for some sort of crazy controller I'm not going to buy that so click uh, and then you know again it's mapped buttons I don't know if it's saved uh, nope again it hasn't saved so um, you know oh no it does seem to work uh, although it's not pulling all the way down you can see so you'd have to map it again yeah and that's because your, your controller is slightly over the top of it so you know effectively I've got to um, you know move these out of the way um, top one there, bottom one there, and the bottom one here. Move that over the top of there, and then click save, and then this works perfectly fine. Then, um, and again, you can see the buttons on there that you need ma need to map to. Uh, and you know, as I said, sometimes it saves, sometimes it doesn't. And, and in the case of Happy Chick, it doesn't. And actually, one of the main benefits of of, uh, of Happy Chick is meant to be that you don't need to. It's all built in. It's part of the 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 app and the same guy as well. So yeah, it doesn't really always work like that. Um, and so again, if I exit the game, then um, get that off the screen. I exit the game, I'm back into the to the Happy Chick emulator. So there you go. And I've got Metal Slug, which is also a lot of fun, uh, and a few other bits and bobs. So that is uh, more or less about as much as I can say about it for now. I mean, uh, I've gone on for about forty odd minutes, so I think I've said enough. Um, is it worth buying? Definitely, every day of the week. Um, so far, it's not let me down. Um, the, the quality is is fine for the price of it. I mean, remember, I paid it was 120 quid for this. Um, you can get them for 105 off eBay, but you know this is from Fun Stop. So if I have any issues in the next 12 months, it goes back and I get it get it repaired for free. So I'd rather pay the extra 10, 15 quid and and do that. Uh, than uh, than buy it off eBay from from some unknown seller who may disappear at any time. So um, so that's the the device again. I mean, as I said, get rid of the uh, get rid of the uh, the stock browser and the stock file manager. They're rubbish. Um, you may need to in install some of these emulators um, from the Play Store. Um, some of them come with the device anyway, uh, and you know the ones that don't come with the device are built into to Happy Chick. Um, we go back to the main screen. Uh, and that's it. The only other thing to mention is, uh, as I drop that back down here, is there is actually a, 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 an upgrade app for the device, a, um, a firmware upgrade. Um, I think I said ROM earlier, and I meant firmware. So there is, a, there is a new firmware upgrade for this one. This is 4.4.2, which is Candy Cane or, or something like that, Kit Kat, I don't know. Um, but the new one's out, which is 4.4.4. Uh, and so uh, JXD have released that, which is which is quite heartening because it means that JXD is still developing for the device. They haven't just put it out there and forgotten about it. Um, the uh, you can download that as a uh, as a firmware update. Uh, it's at the minute it's only been out I don't know seven days now a week. So and there's very few articles on on how to um, how to install it properly. Um, it's a you know it, the main instructions are in Chinese. And then they're in Chinglish because they've been translated from Chinese into English and it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Um, you've got to stick the ROM on here. I'm not 100% sure if I lose everything that I've installed because I stick the new firmware on. So I've been just watching the bulletin boards and uh, waiting to see what people say. Uh, I'm pretty sure that fairly soon there'll be some good little how-to guides on it uh, and uh, some, some things to follow uh, more specifically. So... And there we go, that's uh, a couple of weeks from my GXD. Uh, great device, great bargain. Uh, even just playing um, Super Mario on the NDS emulator uh, is while the way hours and hours of time for me. Uh, Iridium on the Commodore 64 was brilliant. You know, reliving Batman. And you know, for what you can do with this device, if you're prepared to fiddle with it and have a bit of a, a play and, and, and you know, get to, uh, you know, I now understand the file structures of Android more closer than everyone to understand them to be frank and this is one of the you know it's always one of the bugbears with android a little bit which is you know it, it, you just cut you know you've got to get under the hood to get it to work and some people like that 
and don't get me wrong, I'm a geek, I, I like to play around, but you know, Android just takes it to a little bit of another level and, and uh, in this device it can be a little bit frustrating. So there you go, um, thanks for listening uh, for 45 whole minutes and um, you know, if you have any questions let me know um, about device, buying the device and etc. And uh, I'll maybe post some pictures on my Twitter page once I get the, uh, the insert done for this and uh, it doesn't rattle around quite so much but it's, as I said in here it's quite safe even without the phone. Okay, so thank you.